Ashima, introduce yourself. Good evening, sirs. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I'm Ashima Goel. I'm from Mewat, Haryana, and I've done my studies from there. After that, I came to Delhi, and I pursued my graduation in biochemical engineering and biotechnology from IIT Delhi. So during the course of my program, I also got opportunities to pursue research internships abroad. I have uh, been to Taiwan, Canada, and Switzerland. And I think that have these experiences have added to my knowledge and perspectives. After that, sir, I was offered a position as a PhD student in U.S. Scripps Research Institute, California. However, I decided that I wanted to stay in India and work closer home, and prepare for civil services. So, for uh, some financial reasons, I had to work for some time in ICICI Bank, Mumbai. And in 2019, sir, uh, I got. All India ranked 65 in civil services examination. 65? Yes, sir. Then yes. why didn't you join? So because of a uh, documentation issue that happened, I I was not allocated service. Oh, why? Uh, so ma'am, in that year, EWS reservation was introduced for the first time. And there was no clarity regarding the financial year for which it was to be submitted. So I had submitted a certificate. Then at the time of interview, I was asked to resubmit a certificate because many other candidates had interpreted the financial year to be different. So I got delayed because of COVID pandemic and specific situation in my state. No, but if your rank was 65, even without the certificate, yes, you could have yes. been considered? Actually, sir, in prelims, I had missed the general cutoff by 0.7 marks. Oh. So what does that benefit? You didn't go to CAT? I went to CAT and uh, High Court also, ma'am. But uh, here it happened that. Uh, That's amazing. No, but if she has the world of the benefit. No, I don't know. That's why you must be good. Yes. So it, what happened, ma'am? Unfortunately, uh, initially they told me that it was a matter of delay, and it I only got to know through RTI response. I was not informed of cancellation of candidates. Well, then anyway, we hope that this year Thank you will you make it. it. Thank you so much, ma'am. So uh, now, what's your basic qualification? You said. Sir, I have done uh, B.Tech and M.Tech from mm -hmm. IIT Delhi. IIT Delhi in what subject? Biochemical Engineering and Biotechnology. Okay. And your work experience you have mentioned already. We start with Dr. Sina. Thank you, sir. Ashima. Yes, sir. You tell me, how can IIT, say for example, IIT Delhi. Yes, sir. Be more, be made more productive. Yes, sir. To the education sector, you know. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, one thing I feel that uh, the challenge, challenge that IIT Delhi is facing at present, especially I feel in the research sector, there is a challenge of funding and lack of industry and academia linkage. So if there is academia uh, industry linkage to the research that is being done in IIT, then definitely uh, the results can be translated well in, into the market and the more funding can come and more planned research projects can happen. That is one thing. Secondly, I feel, sir, uh, there is also a uh, faculties issue because sometimes enough faculty is not there. So if that parameter is uh, taken care of, then also it can definitely contribute. Okay, that is true. Yes, sir. But I want to move beyond just IIT, okay, sir. A technical thing. Why can't it be made into a general university? It has such good uh, campus, facility. Yes, sir. Why should it be made uh, into a general university? Sir, because it is an institute of national importance. It is an institute of eminence also. And it has a specific mandate to, uh, to, to, uh, cater to that particular section wherein engineering students come. And if uh, it is made a general university, the tag that it has of being a prominent institute, that uh, it gets diluted to that extent. Why, why should it get diluted? If you have, a, a, you know, say, medical. Yes, sir. How do, will it get diluted? Suppose you have a international relations. Why will it get diluted? That will remain it is in its own corner. Sir, maybe I'm not able to understand your question. No, I'm saying. Yes, sir. So let me give you an example. Yes, sir. 
you know who is the director of iit delhi sir uh, recently it has changed hmm. initially it was uh, ram rambopal rao sir now sir i am not aware of the so director. he told other day on tv now yes, they are starting a medical college in iit delhi okay sir because that is the mandate now okay to make it more productive okay okay so we can have more uh, so social definitely, sciences definitely sir there is also institute of management so management studies are also being imparted apart from engineering so so if there is a mandate and if all the resources can come in and pull in then uh, it can be extended to the medical sector also exactly so yes, that's sir. what i was saying yes sir okay have you heard of this term bimstech Yes, sir. What is the full form? Sir, it is Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation. Okay. And uh, who are the members? Yes, sir. So Bangladesh, India, Myanmar, and uh, Thailand, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Yes, sir. How many you said? Sir. Uh, sir Bhutan. Yes. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I missed Bhutan. Yes, sir. Bhutan. Bhutan. Okay. So, what is the aim and objective of setting up Bimstec? Yes, sir. Sir, Bimstec is a uh, is an organ is a grouping which is at the interface of India's neighborhood first policy and act east policy. So, uh, it is, and especially given the backdrop that we were not able to put through our interest in SARC because of the blockage by Pakistan at various issues. Uh, mainly regarding the bilateral issues so we need in an organization where economic cooperation technical connectivity and many other issues even women empowerment so these can be tackled separately so in that we in bimstec becomes very important for india okay where is the next summit going to be take take place so bimstec i think uh, uh, in next few days it is going to happen where sir i am not aware of the location sri lanka Are you aware of some of the main issues yes, sir. on the agenda? Uh, no, sir. I'm not aware of that. What are some of the challenges in front of Bimstec? Yes, sir. <coughs> sir, one is that uh, it uh, it faces a challenge of asymmetry uh, asymmetric uh, nature of countries because uh, it has been uh, seen that sometimes. countries feel that uh, india's big brotherly attitude is a, is a problem so that is there sir okay sir ft negotiations have also been going on but they have not reached the finality and sir economic uh, the economic um, i'm sorry sir the connectivity of roads and everything projects are going on for example uh, india myanmar thailand uh, india myanmar thailand trilateral highway is there kaladan multimodal project is there right. but still uh, given the fact that in myanmar uh, the military janta has taken place so the pro- pace of development has slowed down so i think that these are the major challenges what about that. china is it china a very big challenge for uh, bimstec you know myanmar uh-huh. you know thailand how closely they are linked with china yes the sir, part yes, of sir. belt and road yes and sir. then we want to make it part of south asia yes, how is sir. it possible so we are facing that challenge because uh, china is uh, trying to deeply integrate with myanmar and especially the the military there has a very close linkage with china so that is a challenge but i think we are uh, focusing on our strengths and we are focusing on our project delivery to okay last question what is the challenge that bimstec faces yes sir in relation to the rohingya issue sir uh, so rohingya issue has in a way shed, uh, clouded uh, the deba- uh, the discussion of our uh, country india with myanmar so one on one side we want to deepen the economic cooperation and other kinds of cooperation but at the same time we also want that uh, refugee influx and rohingya issues uh, is myanmar to be held responsible for for that part so recently also uh, the rohing on the rohingya issue genos it was said that it was a genocide uh, from myanmar so the thing is that we cannot vocally criticize myanmar because we have our interest in the region but at the same time we want that the 
liberal and the pluralistic order and democratic order to be upheld. So sometimes these issues uh, take the hostage for the whole organization as such. Okay. Thank you. You come from Haryana. Yes, sir. Your state has recently made a provision that certain jobs will be reserved for locals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are your views on that? Sir, uh, I feel that the intention is right because they want to provide uh, employment to the people, to the youth. But in long term, sir, the purpose will itself get defeated because uh, it is a uh, centralized, I would say, top-down approach and the investor confidence and the, the principles of commerce being based on merit is compromised. And already uh, cities like Gurgaon and uh, Faridabad are facing an industrial inertia. So they will move out. They will look out for other alternative locations, maybe to Noida. What sort of jobs have been reserved? Sir, I think blue collar jobs, which are below the, uh, which have salary of below mm -hmm. rupees 30,000. 30,000? 75,000? Sir, it was initially 50,000. Then uh -huh. it was later uh, reduced, reduced to, 30 to 30,000. Okay. Yes. So 30,000 uh, only blue collar you will not get for that, that amount. You will only get uh, class 4 employees. Yes, sir. Now, class 4 employees in government also, you know, there is a policy that they are not transferred too much away from their hometown. Okay. Okay. Right? If a person belongs to, let us say, Mirat division, then he will remain in Mirat division. Okay. Okay. He may be transferred from one district maximum to the other, but doesn't go far away. Okay. So, in a way, you are employing local people only, in government also. Hmm. So what's wrong with this policy then? Sir, uh, I would say it is a it is a forced approach to, up to the industries. That is, that is the uh, ideological flaw I feel with this. What could have been a better approach was to ensure skilling and more job opportunities than to force the industries to compulsorily, to compulsorily take, employ yes, them. Because and ultimately the purpose will get defeated when they will move out, so we'll lose on industries, so we'll lose out on jobs. And what also. has happened in the court now? Sir, I think court has stayed the law. Court has stayed? Stayed the law, yes, sir. Okay. Implementation of the law. We'll have to check up on that. Yes, sir. It was stayed, I think, by lower court, but then okay. Thank you. I, I a higher sir. court has lifted the stay. Okay, sir. That is my impression, but we can check. Okay, sir. Now let's move to a different area. Ethanol blending program yes, of the sir. government. Yes, sir. Can you say something about this? Yes, sir. Sir, it is basically uh, India's program to move to uh, energy transition and move to more renewable energy, especially biofuels. So, <coughs> alcohol. Biofuels come under the category of renewables? Yes, sir, in a way because. Uh, no, no, not in a way. There is okay. a, do they come under the category of renewables? Uh, I think because uh, they can be made uh, sustainably and for a long time from the um, um, waste. All right, carry on with your answer. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, this is a program wherein with gasoline and petrol, we, we can mix the biofuels uh, to, to decrease their emission uh, carbon emission co uh, coefficient. Initially, the government had set a target of 10% ethanol blending by 2030. And... Uh, I think 2% of biodiesel in, in diesel, but uh, it has been uh, fastened to 2023, 10% ethanol blending by 2023 now. And 20% uh, and by? 20% by 2030. By 2030. Yes. Okay, now tell me, do the automobile engines uh, not need any alteration because of this? Sir, I, I think they will need alterations because uh, because the technology, because the compatibility of the e ethanol blended uh, fuel with the engine technology will will be an issue, as so there will be needed. Uh, it will be needed to change them in a certain manner. And how will it affect the consumer? Sir, it will increase the price for consumers. It will increase the price. So if they have to change some. Um, no, no. Change the engine will come from the manufacturer. Yes, sir. But using this fuel, how will it affect the consumer? 
sir uh, maybe in uh, will in the long, will the expenditure go up or go down sir it depends on how uh, affordably we, we we are able to and how in large amount we are able to produce ethanol by that time no, but ethanol is definitely cheaper as compared to oil so the, but the production has not scaled up to that level no, that mm. that may make it unavailable for blending but if it is available mm. then what happens sir i think then, the price will go down but what happens to the calorific value of the blended fuel you are an engineer and yes sir biotechnologist that's why i'm asking you yes sir sir so, uh, calorific value will go down sir will go down you are guessing or you no, know no sir will go down because the efficiency will not be that much with the how much so mm-hmm. this impact on the consumer will depend on the calorific value okay whether the consumption of the fuel goes up per lit per kilometer or goes down okay. and how much is the fuel less expensive after blending okay. so all this calculation has to be done okay. thank you sir okay my last question to you on a different subject entirely what is the position of india's current account sir current account we are having a trade surplus for last mm. two years mm. yes sir around 2.2 no, i am talking percent. of now okay. this this financial year is about to end now yes sir what is the expected position sir i think we have uh, we have recently so had first tell me the elements of current account and how they are uh, actually performing at this stage sir uh, current account basically trade of goods and services that is current account would include many other things madam sir uh, goods and services you are right they are yes. part of current account but other than that also anyway goods and services tell yes. tell what do you know about them sir i think the merchandise uh, overall export has reached 400 billion dollars recently okay yes so in that way we will be in, a, in an advantageous position but how much is the import I'm not really sure of the figures. Export import figures you don't know. Yes. So current account will come only when you know the difference between the two. Yes. Sir. Plus there are other elements which have to be added. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. We move to you. So Ashima, first of all, uh, you have not got disheartened by the reverse we suffered, and you've shown great courage. That's very good. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, you belong to Nuh, huh? Yes, ma'am. Uh, now uh, there is a, a a very strange contradiction. Uh, no is one of the most backward districts yes ma'am women indicators are very poor yes ma'am so what is happening there yes ma'am second part of the question is yet haryana is throwing up so many women athletes and sports persons yes ma'am so what is happening women indicators are so low the district yes, you come from is one of the worst yes ma'am yet so many women sports persons are thrown up ma'am i see this uh, with two aspects one is that it shows that the efforts of government are showing some results because historically and uh, traditionally the area has been very poor i'm talking of the whole haryana as such at the same time it also sends a message of it is a land of contrast so to say would you call it poor or would you say that the status of women is low notwithstanding affluence normally they say that yes, affluence accompanies status of women but here it's inversely yes, related yes ma'am because uh, deep down in the rural hinterlands they still face the challenge of patriarchal mindset they cannot assert themselves yes, yes. so that then how do they become wrestlers and all these ma'am because i i say that this is a combination of their personal effort also also the support which is being provided by the government especially in the sports sector what is the government doing ma'am uh, this culture of having uh, of giving jobs to the medal winners it is there also the stadiums and uh, other sports infrastructure there is a specific emphasis on sports infrastructure in the state and the network effect also it, it plays a role because when you see role models especially the women role models it inspires the women to come so, forward so if the government is doing so much for sports and getting women in a state where the state of the women is so poor into the sports arena why can the 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 status of women not be uplifted per se in general I mean, still there are villages where brides are being bought because all the female feticides being there, all the girls have been killed, all the yes, all the all the um, fetuses have been destroyed. Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am, because largely uh, the the issue has not been uh, tackled to that to to that extent. Even khap panchayats are still persisting, which are some of which are some of the institutions who have. Uh, so, why can social change not be brought about? 
Ma'am, I think it will take some time because efforts have been made. Okay. And All right. You have done biotechnology and bioengineering, huh? Yes, ma'am. What has been your specialization within this? Ma'am, uh, there is as such no specialization, uh, but we have delved in various subjects like molecular biology, genetics, recombinant DNA, okay. all these. So this uh, Covaxin and Covishield, yes, how do they differ? Ma'am, one is the inactivated vaccine, which is which has the killed virus. Other so how does it act? Which part of the body does it affect and how? So ma'am, uh, the spike proteins that are there in the in the virus, they basically uh, start an immune response from the body. So in that way, the antibodies get activated. So and which which vaccine are you talking about? Ma'am, Covaxin. Okay, so Covaxin is a live one. No ma'am, it, it is an inactivated killed vaccine, which okay. which has some uh, remnants. It of is a live vaccine which has been inactivated. It's not no. a dead vaccine, dead virus. Okay, whatever. Go on. It is a dead. Okay, go on. Hmm. Ma'am, I think that is the difference between COVID shield and Covaxin. Mm -hmm. One has a live virus, adenovirus, which has adenovirus vector. On the other hand, Covaxin has a killed virus. So that is why uh, the response is said to be little weakened as compared to the adeno uh, adenovirus based COVID shield vaccine. Mm -hmm. They affect in the same manner or they affect in a different manner? One affects the virus, one affects the response. What is it? Or they're the same? Ma'am, uh, I'm not able to get the question. The question. Okay. How do they act? Mechanism. For example, yes, there are certain tests, antibody and antigen. Yes, ma'am. The difference is, one of them is testing the reaction produced. Yes, ma'am. One of them is testing directly. So one comes faster, one comes later. Right, ma'am. So I'm asking, how do they give immunity? What are the roots for immunity for both these? I'll have to read okay, about no, it. No, it doesn't matter. Um, what is a patent cliff? Do you know? Patent cliff? I'm, I've not heard of it. Not heard of it. And uh, uh, you do know the importance of your field in the in the area of, of medicine? Yes, ma'am, definitely. What would you say is the most important uh, area where uh, biotechnology can contribute towards so, medicine? Ma'am, I think cancer therapy. Because, in what uh, manner? Because, ma'am, it will make gene level change is possible because today what we have in, in form of the treatments available is chemotherapy or radiotherapy which do not change the mutation at the gene level that has happened. So if we utilize these okay. tools like okay. CRISPR-Cas9. My last question, which is uh, a national education policy has been announced yes, recently. Give me the three critical, which you consider the three most critical uh, interventions suggested in that. So ma'am, one, ma one is the academic bank of credit that mm -hmm. has been uh, planned to be there because it will give a flexibility for the students to choose and uh, navigate between cross disciplines uh, within a, when, when they study within a university. Ma'am, second is the, uh, there has been a provision of special education zones and uh, equity funds wherein the gap between the gender education, rural development, rural education and the urban education will, will be uh, tried to be uh, bridged. Mm -hmm. And third is also involvement of local artisans and utilizing them as faculty for teaching uh, the traditional uh, craft and traditional knowledge. Mm -hmm. That will be. Uh, you are Ashima. And uh, Ashima, tell me, are you aware that uh, now the body parts can be 3D printed? Yeah, yes, sir. It can be printed. Yes, sir. Have you seen it being printed somewhere? Sir, I have seen videos. Videos? Yes, okay. but not physically. Ah, but uh, physically also, uh, at least uh, they are being printed. 3D, heart, 3D heart has been also printed. Ah. Yes. No, I am talking of simpler things. Okay. Heart is a bit complicated. Yes, sir. But simpler things. Yes. Suppose I talk of a tooth. Yes, a sir. tooth can be recreated using 3D printing. Yes, sir. I have seen it being printed, so okay. that's why I am confident about it. Okay. Now, what are the challenges when we are having 3D recreation of the body parts, mm -hmm. organs? Mm -hmm. What are the challenges? Mm -hmm. Sir, one is the complex mechanism 
complex mm-hmm. design of our body our, our body parts mm-hmm. so it may not be possible to exactly um, put in that algorithm in the computer software to to manufacture that part that mm-hmm. to to uh, translate that design into an algorithm in the computer mm-hmm. software it becomes challenging that is one second is also the rejection rejection rate and rejection by the or, by the body because once something is artificially built and then it is impl- implanted in the body mm-hmm. then it has a very high rejection rate mm-hmm. so i think sir in in the, these two fronts there are challenges any other challenges any other uh, uh, let me say non medical uh, challenge printing body parts sir so one is that uh, the the tissue with which it has to be made mm-hmm. uh, it has to be a tissue which uh, which consists of cells of the body because ultimately it is going to be implanted in the body so to have that particular uh, nutritional environment for the tissues and to be able to ethical issues are also there yes sir lots of ethical issues are there yes sir yes sir. so when i saw it being printed then uh, i was discussing they say that ethical issues are much more uh, they are uh, becoming prominent yes, than the technical and engineering issues okay sir okay uh, mr prakash singh headed a committee committee in haryana uh, on some issue do you remember what was the issue sir i have not heard hmm? of it mm-hmm. not heard of okay that was on jat agitation lapses by the police and the uh, uh, bureaucracy okay, and what happened any idea or you are not aware of uh, such a committee no sir i have not uh, heard okay. of it but yes, otherwise sir. generally suppose i have to improve the policing yes sir then uh, what are the committees and commission i can refer to yes sir um one is sir uh, this supreme court uh, verdict is then prakash singh badal case for mm-hmm. police reforms mm-hmm. and uh, verdict yes do you, sir do you call it verdict no sir uh, basically it was a recommendation to implement the let me say guidelines 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 is it uh, mm-hmm. so uh, this prakash is the first point is that uh, it's not uh, that thing no second is uh, that uh, badal gentleman is not here okay is a different fellow sorry. not sorry. prakash singh badal okay sorry. हाँ हाँ ओके हाँ तो रोबर्टो कमिटी इज़ आल्सो देयर रोबर्टो कमिटी इज़ आल्सो देयर रोबर्टो कमिटी इज़ नॉट देयर रोबेरियो कमिटी ओके हाँ सो व्हेन यू रीडिंग दिस थिंग्स गो अ बिट इन द डेप्थ व्हाई बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ प्रकाश सिंह केस एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट गाइडलाइन यस देन एस ए इंक्विजिटिव य you should know who is prakash singh hmm. okay sir okay. because if you just read few lines about prakash singh you know it's not same fellow as prakash singh badal sir ah, some I, coaching I institute uh, literature has printed that you know that ah okay ah so is a uh, interested uh, person bsf dg then nagaland dg some governor and all that okay ah so i was asking you that suppose i have to carry on with police reforms what are the areas you think should be attended mm. sir uh, one thing i feel that job of police is the most uh, understood as the most thankless job mm-hmm. so there has to be effort on the trust building part trust building yes, okay sir. how do you do that sir it has to uh, start on on a da- on a daily or a fortnightly basis where you go and meet people and even the community policing part mm-hmm. also plays a role in this so for example mm-hmm. in haryana there has been an in- initiative of mitra kaksh mm-hmm. where in uh, in in a non uniform style they mm-hmm. one person from the community and one person from the police mm-hmm. they sit together and try to uh, con- control the crime in the nearby areas okay that's one any other suggestion See, other is the increasing the police staff as such because it is said that there is huge vacancy in the police. Mm-hmm. Third is also sir participation. No vacancy. Of you said uh, huge vacancy. So fill up the vacancy. Anything more uh, on uh, increasing? Or do you, are you saying to fill up the vacancy or saying sir, have even, some more post? 
said one is to first fill up the vacancies mm -hmm. and then also it is still it will be still overburdened so in there is a need to increase the number also okay thank you yeah yes all right ashma please wait for a few minutes we will call you for feedback mm -hmm.